Your owners often bring us birds and they say there's diarrhea. But it turns out it's something called polyuria. It's actually polyuria polydipsia. So they urinate a fortune. It's just amazing if you take if you, if you actually look at this on if you take a look there, that's actual urine. This is not a water bowl. The bird sits on your poos and produces urine. So when you have excessive urine in a bird, it's pretty much like a dog or a cat or a human. It's quite complex because it's got to take in fluid, it's got to be, there's certain hormones like, um, that go to the kidney that concentrate urine, and there's a complex mechanism in birds that concentrate urine. But diabet di diabetic syndromes, both mellitus and insipidus, or sugar glucose, can play a role. Kidney function or kidney failure can play a role. Birds have really complex ways of, of concentrating urine. The urine goes into a cloaca and then goes back up the colon. So maybe we've got a problem there as well. This little bird's been on a diet of seed for about at least 12 years. So we can have nutritional issues and vitamin A is a specific one. So a bird like this will get a vitamin A injection as well. And in a few days of this little bird's in hospital, name's Larry. One of the best things we'll be doing is we, we're going to be doing various things like tubing him three times a day. So this is poly aid, which has got pretty much everything, amino acids, vitamins, nutrients, and you'll get this three times a day, plus the vitamin. Plus it's great, we've got an ability to do blood, so we'll take bloods on this bird, we can take um, 0.4 mils of bloods and get a whole spectrum of tests. But if any of you are familiar with your dog or your cat or humans, for kidney function we're going to do urea. And for those of you who like drinking red wine, I, hope, I assume this cockatiel doesn't get red wine, but we're going to test uric acid, which is what we get when we get gout. I'm saying it ingests, but the end product of protein metabolism in birds is uric acid. In humans, it's urea. That's why humans, have, humans urinate out urea. Birds produce this white, chalky stuff at the end of the poo called urate, which you can actually see in the poo there. And fish produce ammonia because they don't have to concentrate it at all. And that's a special adaptation birds have to laying eggs. And so do reptiles have it. So there's three parts to an um, birds. Three parts to dropping. One is the urine, which is usually some urine, the small amount that that's, goes to waste. The other is the urate, which is the end part of protein metabolism in birds. And the other one is poo, which is actually from the gastrointestinal tract. Birds have one opening for all of them. Just like dog, cat or human, we've got so much urine, so we take our dipstick, we put it in, and the dipstick shows glucose, plus, 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 plus. So maybe this is a diabetic. The interesting thing for those of you watching, some of you may be diabetic, the glucose in human, mammals have a glucose between 5 and 8 millimoles per litre. Many of you will know just between 5 and 8 if you live in Australia. In America, you times that by 18 and a half. But birds have normal resting glucose of close to 20. I'm not really sure physiologically how it works, but they have much higher glucose. But you should always have negative glucose on the dipstick, whatever species. Our bodies have evolved to conserve glucose. We've been created to not produce, not waste precious glucose in the urine. So there's a little bit, there's too much glucose, so we will test the diabetes tomorrow. Diabetes in birds is different to humans? It's very different because humans have insulin, which is the main hormone that puts glucose into the cells. Birds have a hormone called glucagon, which pushes up the glucose, because their glucose are close to 20. Remember, humans are five, birds are 20. They keep the glucose very high. So we normally have a glucagon problem in birds when the glucose is too high, rather than insulin deficiency. That's why, all of you watching, you haven't been giving your birds insulin injections twice a day. It's very uncommon, and we generally don't do it because they don't have an insulin problem when they're diabetic. Rip, please, believe it or not. So diabetes in birds, is that is this that common that um, I write for a local newspaper, bird newspaper. And you can actually see we've got an article that we wrote a few years ago. Larry, you can read it. Diabetes in birds, and it's not a joke. From the point of view, many people watching this will laugh, ha ha, diabetes in birds. But Larry's not laughing because uh, there's major issues. And just like a major problem we have with people, it's a major, it, it's a potential problem in birds. Probably not as common. It's very difficult to see. Larry's just passed a poo here. But there's excessive urine there. Now, 
you saw the urine, we put a bowl. Yes, we put a bowl a while ago and you actually saw when you pooed in the bowl all the time, we actually had so much urine that we could actually put a dipstick in and the glucose was very high. You know, what causes diabetes in birds? And it's very different, different to humans or dogs and cats because typically we have a, something called insulin secreted by the pancreas, which takes glucose and puts it into certain cells of the body. Um, but birds have a different mechanism. Their glucose blood, their resting blood glucose is very high. Most mammalian species have a blood glucose between five, between say an average of five, so between three and eight. Most mammalian species, most humans, and even the glucometers we have, because we have a lot of diabetic dogs and cats, they measure glucose up to 25 or sometimes up to 30. This little guy's blood glucose is 48. Same units we use in people. So a human being with that glucose would be dead. His triglycerides, which is a measure of fat, is through the roof. His cholesterol through the roof. So he's actually got major metabolic problems. One of the big things in birds is glucagon, which is a hormone that pushes glucose up and that gets out of control. So it's not, the, it's not the shortage of insulin, but the incredible amount of glucagon. We don't have enough information to really have a proper handle like we have in people. So we don't give insulin, we give glucagon-lowering hormones. And many of you would have heard of glipizide, which is a drug that a lot of people are on. And in fact, uh, cats with diabetes, it's a reasonable drug to use as well. So Larry, we're going to try our best with you because Larry has... Um, an owner that loves him, but as you can kind of see from the back, a little bit disheveled, a little bit weak, eating really well. We have to try and change the diet. Now, the ideal diet for a cockatiel is normally, you know, let's say a teaspoon of seed, vegetables and pellets would be a, a, would be a balanced diet. And we'll try and get him to that. He's, he's on an all seed diet at the moment. To try and bring the cholesterol, triglycerides down is difficult. In a female bird, it's often related to ovarian cysts, ovarian masses, excess hormones and then we would give something to switch to um, stop the hormone but in a male bird it's different we don't know the exact cause but the prognosis isn't brilliant so I'm going to get you Larry to please read the diabetic handout I want you to see the kind of things that we're going to do with you but um, glucose lowering drugs dietary therapy and um, monitoring and following up I worked with, uh, there was a vet that I worked with for many years who put every diabetic bird on a short course of clav. And, uh, you know, they, they, they might not be home just doing it as a one off at this stage because it's, it's a new admission. But I don't think an antibiotic is going to sort out the diabetes. But we're trying to cover our bases. The prognosis for Larry is not brilliant. Larry, as you can see, is a cockatiel. Looks like it's male just by the features and approximately 89 grams. And um, I've forgotten his exact age. Larry, say hello to the camera. We're going to do our best with you. We'll put his age in writing on the bottom. <laughs> his age in writing. And I think we can put the article, we'll put a link. We can put a link to the website, Mel, if people want yep. to see a website. So read the description from the comments. Yeah, and there's a website on... We have a website, birdvetmelbourne.com. And there's a diabetes. And there's diabetes. Um, how are you going? Good, thank you. How's, how's our diabetic bird going? Uh, the water's stopped, so he seems quite happy. So what do you think? I think you might have fixed him. Okay. Do we get that on the video? You that, fixed him. Is that, is that good for business? <laughs> no, that's just nice because we um, don't get too many diabetic birds. Now we've given you medication to put in the water that he's got to drink. Yeah. The medication he's on is glipizide, which is a human glucose lowering drug. and. Uh, the bird self-medicates because the more he drinks, the more medication he gets. But, that, <clears throat> but that's awesome because we, um, we really had major issues. So let's take him out and look. What's his appetite like? Fine. Energy? I look a little active in there. <laughs> he seems all right, yeah. He can bite me harder than he could before. Oh, that's a good sign. So, yeah. I think he might have lost a tiny bit of weight. He was looking a bit chubby prior. So you got you guys saw um, you saw Larry when no, 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 no. when he first came in, yeah. And we say Larry's a male, correct? No idea. Is that what your opinion is? The reason we ask is that 
diabetes is so much more common in female cockatiels than males and it's often hormonally mediated. It's quite possibly a female, we don't know, we just called it. What happened on the wing here with all the feather loss? Sorry? Oh, so, he's had, he's, he, he's had that, that's where, similar thing there where he gets fatty deposits. Yeah, he's had a, that's, <coughs> so he's had an amputation, yeah, he's had a little, little growth removed, he's also flat, maybe hurt this on the side of a... Or something like that. But he's looking really good, so he's looking bright, and it's amazing to hear Nona saying that. Um, you fixed him. <laughs> we do fix we do fix birds occasionally, but the fact that he's eating well, bright, not drinking is amazing because diabetes is so complex in a bird, as you all know. It's glucose. It's it's uh, it's not exactly insulin. It's it's more glucagon, which is a hormone that, that elevates glucose. elevates glucose, and we've got to control. But this is a brilliant result, so let's get a weight on our bird, we'll evaluate, we'll discuss doing bloods again, maybe in six weeks. We'll see how we go, but that's excellent. Right. And it's so easy, he doesn't have to medicate the bird in the bit, just put something in the water. And it's not an expensive drug. Good outcome. <laughs> so another thing, it's good that we do... Why put him in a casserole dish. <laughs> that's just something Phil likes to do, it's a salad spinner, isn't it, or a colander? <laughs> So, Peter, the casserole dish is telling us that the weight is okay. That his goose is cooked. Goose is cooked. Yeah. But another thing that's amazing is that this bird has cholesterol and triglycerides at such high levels. I'm looking triglycerides, cholesterol 25 and triglycerides 45, which is almost not compatible with life because the blood would be so milky and oily. When you, when you draw that sample, you're going to just see like white liquidy oil because... That's what milk is, that's like milk, which has got high fat and high triglycerides. So it's pretty serious. So what we'll discuss is maybe not today because the birds do well. And we, we, we've taken bloods recently, but we need to get those triglycerides and um, cholesterol down. Otherwise, there's going to be circulatory failure at some degree at that level. So it's not compatible generally with life. The only reason the bird can cope with it is it probably happened gradually over a long period of time. Because uh, our patient, I think he's quite friendly with us for a minute. Yeah, here he comes. Um, so even even a bird. Come on, baby. Likes me better, haha. Ha. <laughs> does like you better. He does so even, like. Oh. He does like. He's, so, he doesn't um, get to fly much, so he's. I don't know. He's a little. He's a baby. Don't be scared. I don't want him to fly. So um. Even though he's had a major things, I think he's not too. Hopefully, he's not too scared of us. Is he quite friendly with you at home? Oh, he's he's spent most of his time by himself. We we now that he's inside, the doors open, and he we put the telly on for him, and he watches that all day. ABC Kids, he likes. So let you all know, because uh, Peter's got um, TV on for Larry. Peter's taken the effort, which, which we're happy and excited to know, to buy a TV that's got a 200 refresh rate. Or two, it's got, um, all the new TVs are that high because birds, bird's eyes have got a refresh rate of 110. So, sorry, they don't refresh rate, but if it's the normal TVs or older computers, the birds see flicking, like this light. It's like a fusion rate. Flicking fusion rate. So your TV should be 200 refresh, re refresh rate. Okay. 200 like a fusion rate and they're not expensive so if you guys are buying a tv and you want your bird to enjoy tv and enjoy watching a what is he like what's his favorite abc abc kids he likes there's lots on there lots of no, his favorite's got to be the youtube channel for us surely <laughs> so we'd like you we'd really appreciate if you start letting him watch himself on tv oh, okay our yeah. youtube channel will have him will feature him as a oh, diabetic i can just shove a camera on him and feed him in. Okay. <laughs> but you can see that birds are time, even though this bird's not handled all the time, if you if you just gradually get him used to him, talk around him, you can get comfortable being on your being on your arms. But uh, seriously, this di diabetic and diabetic ketoacidosis syndrome is quite serious. And uh, I'm glad this bird's doing so well. And the fact that he's preening on my hands is even better. Because that's a, a happy bird does that usually. So, Peter, you can have them on your hand as well. Larry's quite comfortable with us. Larry, would you like to come this way? Oh, do it. He's going to get more of an examination now. Oh, is he? Get him on. Yeah, I'm the nasty man that put you in the cage. 
I know, right? 